What's your disposition toward the idea of secession? This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by... I do want to clarify something that Eleanor said. I don't know if you can hear her or not. But at the, at the, uh, the press gal. Oh, oh, okay. Guess we're going in. But she, was, she was saying that um, the, the press kick out was because of room more than anything else. Uh, I don't know if that got through or not. The sun is live. That stove was, uh, oh, was good enough. Yeah, that tin foil was really sort of insulated. Thank you. I'd like to comment about the tin foil. All right, that one. Uh, I know you, though. I can't read my jacket. I got it in Derek's car. But you didn't cause any more traffic jams? Yeah. Only, I can only guess. Well, you'll shoot. I mean, you don't want to be in here. But we made it. But I just I had to decide not to come back in. I had to. Uh, I just knew this was going to be a pleasant problem to have. Too many people in the room. Oh, yeah, that, that, was, that, was, that was a good time. Um, We got our own. This was uh, listed as an open press event. Was, uh, do you have anything to say about the possibility, possibility of Mitt Romney getting in the race? What I would do is probably just talk about that, just talk to the guy uh, that runs the club, Rick. Thanks for answering one question, Elias. What's your disposition toward the idea of secession? If New Hampshire were to become an independent country, what would be your disposition for, for it? We have a small secessionist movement here. It's getting slipperier and slipperier up here. What's the high temperature? I think you're at it. Cold. The high temperature is cold. I got to pull a little bit ahead. to the candidate, you know, uninterrupted. And the last time we had somebody in here, they just sucked all the oxygen right you know, out of the room. He, he, uh, Dr. Paul kind of threw you under the bus while we were outside talking to him. He said to talk to you about this. Well, about I'm glad, I'm, <laughs> well I don't think he why, threw me under the, the bus. That, that it, was, cause they, cause they got the impression that the press seemed to all, all be under the impression that this was an open press event to be able to ask questions. Yeah. Well, that was my decision ownership to it. And it wasn't because I'm not interested in having the press in here. I mean, the press doesn't like us anyway, so what do I care? I don't care if they come in here and, you know, they, they craft a story that says we kick puppies or whatever. I don't care. You know, I don't care. All I wanted to do was these people came here to listen to Rand Paul and to ask him questions. And if you got the media jumping all over it, that doesn't happen. 
I mean, I could have just said, hey, you're all going to be off. I didn't say they had to be off the property. And it was very, actually very much clear, clear that this was a public event, which I feel that it was to some extent outside. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I appreciate the access that we have had, but I thought I should ask why we didn't get more. Yeah, we're, we're not, I mean, we're not interested in squashing the press. That's not our deal. I mean, they don't care about us. We don't care about them. We have a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks, Rick. Sure thing. What are you arresting this man for? You've seen the dramatic liberty arrests in Keene, New Hampshire. Now see 111 reasons why you should move there and reinforce these gutsy activists. Keene's advantages are compelling, and the list of reasons to move has just been updated. For details, visit freekeen.com.